United Nations Secretary General will write a letter of condolence to the government and the people of Zimbabwe following the death of former President Robert Mugabe. The late leader was a regular attendee at UN General Assemblies and other events where he expressed his often outspoken views. SABC correspondent Sherwin Bryce Peace joins us now from New York. Uh, Sherwin, th this sounds quite gracious to, to write this letter considering uh, that members of the Security Council say impose sanctions on Zimbabwe and often came, uh, well, were the subject of, of Mugabe's harsh tongue. Well, I think if the response from uh, the president of Russia, um, uh, President Putin, earlier today, that was very complimentary of, of uh, Mugabe. It's an indication just how split the Security Council was. Remember, these were not United Nations sanctions. These were unilateral sanctions imposed by the United States, targeted sanctions, if you will, by the United States and the European Union. Uh, that, that have, entities that have come in for a great deal of criticism for these sanctions, particularly from African countries and particularly from countries within the SADC region. And you know, France is it's an absolute fact to say that the United Nations is always a reluctant critic, particularly when a leader dies, uh, putting aside their, 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 their track record, their domestic or international track record, which I think is evidenced in the statement we heard from Stefan Dujric, the spokesperson to Antonio Guterres. I asked him, you know, what is the UN's reaction? They said they will write to the government uh, expressing their condolences. He also offered uh, his condolences to the family of the loved ones, uh, President Mugabe's role in securing the independence of Zimbabwe, Stefan said, uh, and the fight against apartheid are key parts of his legacy. I then followed up with Stefan and I said to him, you know, what was the relationship between President Mugabe and the various secretaries general that Stefan had served under, uh, which includes Kofi Annan, ba uh, Ban Ki-moon, and now Antonio Guterres. Uh, Stefan replied, uh, Francis, that Mugabe was very often at the United Nations General Assembly, often met with Secretaries General. From our standpoint, he said Mugabe also made notable contributions when chairing organizations like the African Union and SADC. Uh, he would add that the UN remains strongly committed to supporting Zimbabwe in its efforts to promote inclusive stability, sustainable development, democratic governance, and human rights. So this is not uh, showering praise. This is not a, a, a moment of adoration for the fall, fallen leader, uh, Stefan Duzerich, there choosing his words, Francis, quite carefully, I would say. So, Sherwin, throughout the day, we've shown this incredible footage of uh, Mugabe uh, blazing at uh, the podium at the UN. Just, just take us through some of the <laughs> memorable speeches that he gave. <laughs> Well, I'll remember the last time in 2017 when uh, President Mugabe came here for the last time. I mean, unbeknownst to him at the time or any of us, that that would be his last speech. And Francis, when he, you know, he was often helped, uh, surrounded by aides when he was walking. I think many will remember him at Harare International Airport actually falling at one point and his uh, bodyguards having to help him up. At the UN General Assembly, he really was wobbling uh, to get to the lectern where he would have to uh, give his speech. So his body already in 20. 2017 during his last appearance was failing him, uh, but certainly not his mind. And he often used the platform afforded him here uh, really to uh, you know, sh put his finger in the nose of, uh, of his critics. And uh, uh, the General Assembly was certainly a platform for that. Uh, often uh, Western countries that he was very critical of, particularly the European Union and the United States, would get up and walk out uh, when Mugabe would come in. I'll just read you one of the, his diatribes against the West. In 2014, he said, regime change is a diabolical illegal policy of interference in the domestic affairs of my country, and no good can come from undermining our economy or depriving our citizens of the necessities of life. Why, I ask, should Zimbabweans continue to suffer under the yoke of unjustified and unwarranted illegal sanctions? In 2017, that final speech I was referring to, quote, damnation we shall always resist no matter whence it comes. We have resisted it when it was in the form of imperialism as we fought for our own independence, our own culture, our own sovereignty, to be masters of our own destiny, that's why we can, we, we, we can ourselves be free today. It's because the monster of imperialism, he continued, was defeated by us, Francis. Bring us another monster by whatever name. He will suffer 
the same consequences. This was vintage Robert Mugabe, always ready with a great soundbite. Uh, it's so good, it made people get up and walk out. Yeah, sure. So in finality then, it's going to be pretty difficult for Emerson Mnangagwa to sort of make that uh, same presence felt. Uh, surely a very different vibe right now when Zimbabwe <laughs> is speaking at the UN. I'll tell you this, it's definitely, um, there's a different sense of anticipation when Emerson Mnangagwa comes to speak as opposed to uh, Robert Mugabe. I think there was always a sense of expectation. What generally happens over the course of High Level Week at the General Assembly, the halls are very packed on the first day. During the opening ceremony, when the Secretary General speaks, Donald Trump, the US President speaks, you tend to have a very packed auditorium. But as the week goes by, uh, people tend to, you know, filter off into different uh, meeting rooms and uh, venues around New York City. But when Mugabe would come, say, on a Wednesday or a Thursday, the, the hall would be sizably full because there was such a great deal of anticipation uh, given what he would say. And I will just tell you, Francis, that uh, as per tradition here at the United Nations, when a former head of state or current head of state, a former head of government or otherwise, uh, passes, uh, the tradition in the UN General Assembly is to have an unofficial meeting where various UN officials uh, might speak, but also the various regional groupings, so the Africa group, the Asia Pacific group, Western Hemisphere, they all speak uh, commemorating and certainly paying tribute to the life. I expect that that will happen, but as yet no official announcement has been made. All right. Thank you very much. Our correspondent uh, live from New York, Sherwin Bryce Peace.